Um, so anyway, uh, Westminster thinks big. Uh, speaking tonight is a lot like your very first kiss. Uh, it, it's scary as hell. It's exciting as hell. But you don't want to get it wrong. So thinking about this talk, I went, what am I going to talk about? And I thought, well, I'll go and look at the, what this night is, Westminster Thinks Big, and what it inspires in me. And so as I looked at that title, I thought, why aren't we having John Watkins speak? <laughs> Now, what's scary is I have about 20 of these photos like this, <laughs> and I don't know who the guy is on your left. <laughs> but that's just how John is. You're walking in, I think this is in Florence, and people just come out of the woodwork, you know, and want to be with him. Uh, so anyway, that didn't help me. So I thought, well, um, this is supposed to be like TED Talks, so I'll look at TED Talks and see how that inspires me. And when I did a search on economics, uh, the thing that came up was uh, this talk by Nick that about income inequality, and it's the only one that was banned from being put on the web. So I went, bingo, this is the perfect topic, economics, income inequality. So the economy is actually pretty easy to understand. Uh, how we're going to fix it is where we're going to have trouble. So let, let's start with the explanation. Uh, the first graph we have here is uh, looking at corporate profits over time and their percentage of GDP. And the thing we should realize right off the bat is American business is doing fine. There's a few segments that might have trouble, but by and large, American business is just doing great. But if you want to find where the problem is, it's in American households. And uh, this, this is kind of troubling data for me to look at. But what we're looking at is wages as a percentage of the economy. And as we can see, uh, wages as a percentage of the economy have been falling since 1970. And uh, the employment as a ratio to population has been falling since 1999. And so the problem in our economy is household and jobs. So, as a labor economist, I thought, I'll, I'll explain the labor market to you. It's pretty easy. This is some of my crazy graphic skills. I created this uh, myself. It took about five minutes. So this is the easiest way to understand the labor market. And this is a model from uh, Lester Thoreau. So on the left, uh, this is like a queue of jobs. And at the very top are the very best jobs, the highest paying, high status, all, the jobs we all dream of, being a professor at Westminster College. <laughs> and at the bottom we have S jobs, and that's easy to figure out what that S means. I don't know if I can say that tonight, but it's secondary jobs. <laughs> so we saw that one coming, okay. O over on the right we have the supply of workers. And the supply of workers is queued up based on their skills and education. So you want to be at the top of that, uh, I guess, tube that I made. Uh, they've got the highest skills, the best education. You don't want to be at the bottom. And so what happens is businesses that have the best jobs go and they find the best workers. And we go on and go so forth from that. But you can see the problem. The demand for jobs is smaller than the supply of workers. And that's been a fundamental problem with the United States economy since the 1970s. Now, sometimes people think the answer is throwing education at the American economy. But the problem is that's a great strategy individually. Because then it changes where you're at in that worker queue. But it doesn't solve the problem with the job queue. Does that make sense? Thank you for responding. <laughs> All right, so how do we fix it? Well, one thing you could do is you could give money to business. There was a lot of conversations about that they're the job creators. Uh, there's a couple of problems with that. First of all, the demand for labor is a drive demand. It comes from the product demand for businesses, for their, 
for their goods and services. Okay? If that's strong, then they tend to demand workers. Okay? Uh, the other problem is when you study how businesses act and think, they aren't sitting in a room going, hey, let's create more jobs. What they're thinking about is what do our customers want? What do they need? Uh, what are the segments that we're hitting? Are we hitting all of our segments? Uh, what can we do with marketing? What are our rivals doing? And what's the government doing? They're not sitting around going, our next policy should be jobs. Okay? So, if you want to go on the business side, the policy recommendation I would suggest is that you have to give some sort of incentive for job creation. And, and one easy way to do that would be to give tax credits or refunds or whatever for creating jobs and training workers. Okay, another option is to increase the demands for goods and services, which then would increase the demand for labor. Remember, we talked about it being a derived demand. All right, so one of the problems with just giving money to households is where do they spend their money? So President Bush did a small tax cut right towards the end of his administration, and research has shown that most of that money went to Walmart and Target, okay, buying small ticket items. I'm not sure that's going to create jobs in America. Maybe a great policy for India and China. But we're concerned with America. Okay? And the other problem is American households have a lot of debt. So if they were doing the smart thing individually and the government gave them money, they should pay off their debt, which wouldn't solve in the short run our jobs problem. So once again, if you want to go the household approach, your best option is to give tax credits for some sort of consumption that will help Americans. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's where you go, yes, yes, that really makes sense. Okay, third option. I'm giving you three tonight. Government. John Maynard Keynes said there's an inherent problem in capitalism, and that problem is it doesn't generate enough jobs. Not all the time. Sometimes it does, other times it doesn't. I'm going to add that it doesn't generate enough good jobs. Okay? So one solution Keynes said is if business isn't creating jobs, if household consumption isn't creating jobs, then you have to turn to government. And historically, when government has created jobs, it has worked. Okay? But the problem is, if you're worried about the debt, okay, so government debt, is that a problem? If you have that, you need to talk to my wife, Kirsten. She's an economist. She'll help you out on that one. Where they spend is critical. We want them to be smart with taxpayer money. So I would suggest that they should invest in fixing our infrastructure, going green, making things more sustainable. Those are the sort of things that we should do. All right. So you're probably going... Is this a bad thing that households are suffering so much? Yeah, the problem is it affects our democracy. It affects hope. Uh, it's just bad economics. In fact, I saw uh, a finding recently of households that have never experienced an earner making $25,000 a year, that their unemployment rate is 23% right now. That's not going to help anyone with hope in those low-income housing. All right, so what can you do? Get informed take a class from John Watkins. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but the alumni audit is cheap. Do it. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then you can send me an email, and I'll send you a list of things I think you should read. I'll hook you up. And it won't be uh, Freakonomics. Another thing you should do is get active. Okay. Uh, I would suggest to get active with the Westminster community. We have a lot of faculty, staff, and students that are passionate. We're doing a lot of good things. We can see that tonight in the talks. And let me just mention, alumni, we love you. Yes, it's true. And we miss you. So come back to campus. Help us out with our different causes. Uh, the other last thing, that, thank you, the last thing I would suggest is that we can learn from the progressive era. The progressive era is a little bit similar to this one. Uh, businesses were doing very well, households were not. 
Uh, there were things that we did right in the progressive era. There were things we did wrong. Great place to look at. And I've been being ranked on my talk the whole time with this. What we should do is next time everyone gets a scorecard and <laughs> when we get done, you know, it's like, but don't hold it up halfway through those 4.2s are killing me. <laughs> anyway, thank you and good night.